Now, certainly we've known for a long time that if you go different places, you're going to have different temperatures. Some places have a nice warm climate. Some places have a cold climate. You can go some places and have uh, beautiful, beautiful weather, and you can go to other places, and the weather's kind of cold. Some places you're going to go, and there's just a gorgeous beach, and the sun's always shining. Where other places, if you go, well, it's going to be a little bit more on the chilly side. But, so why are these places of the earth have such temperature differences. It turns out that they get the same number of hours of sunshine. The thing that's different is the heat, that light from the sun, that insulation from the sun is going to be hitting at a different angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus our attention on how the angle of insulation changes at different places on the earth. And we'll also talk about how it changes at different times as well. So imagine uh, two people standing at two different places and the sun hits those people at different angles. So here are two people at different places. Uh, I guess some people are taller than others. But the sun's going to come and strike these people at different angles. So here are the rays of the sun. This is the solar radiation, the solar energy that's coming down on that person. And here's this solar radiation, the energy coming from the sun down to this person. And you'll notice the thing that's different about them is the angle that that energy is hitting the sun. Now this energy is known as insulation. And insulation is just a, a really fancy way of saying sunshine. Whenever you see the word insulation, feel free to cross it out and write the word sunshine in its place. It's the same thing. Insulation uh, is a, stands for incoming solar radiation. That's what insulation stands for. Doesn't that make you sound fancy? Oh, incoming solar radiation. Yeah, insulation. The insulation is bright out. It's, it's sunshine. We're just talking about sunshine, the energy from the sun. So the person on the left here, the sunshine for them is hitting them at a greater angle, right? Where it's hitting us here at a 90 degree angle, which is the highest we can get, right? It's hitting at a 90 degree angle. That You can't get any higher than that. If you go a little bit past that, you're going to get uh, you know, uh, 89 degrees essentially the other way. And although we haven't measured this, let's say that that's... And so this is, uh, let's say, a 45 degree angle. Let's say it's half that amount. So at 90 degrees, 45 degrees, what happens is when the sunlight hits at a 90 degree angle, the energy is more intense, it's more focused. All of the energy from the sun is focused in one area. We say that that's the intensity of insulation is greater. Where all over here, we have a little bit less intense. So we've got a 45 degree angle over here, and it's a lower intensity. This intensity of the energy equates to he uh, heat. The more intense the energy, the higher the temperatures are. So when it's 90 degrees and it's very intense, we get a greater heat, a greater temperature. We're here, we're going to get lower heat or a lower temperature. So any time that the angle of insulation, or again, remember insulation just means sunshine, any time the angle of sunshine is at 90 degrees or, or a very high number, close to 90 degrees, we're going to get more heat, more intense insulation. This is, uh, you know, instead of 90 degrees, sometimes we use the term that the, the insulation is perpendicular. All right, the, now the first place to see this happen. The first place we're going to see this happen is at changing latitudes. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And let's talk about different latitudes. That's the first thing. We've got to talk about the latitude of, uh, of, of an observer. Where's the, where are they standing on the Earth? We'll also talk about what time of year it is as well as what time of day it is and see how they all are affected by the intensity of the insulation, by the angle of insulation. So imagine we have the Earth, here's uh, half the Earth, and we know that the different parts of the Earth, we've got the equator in the North Pole, so there's the equator at zero degrees latitude, and then we've got the North Pole and the South Pole. North Pole is a latitude of 90 degrees north, and here's the South Pole, and that has a latitude of 90 degrees south. 
Uh, and remember, now when I say 90 degrees, I'm not talking about the angle of insulation. That's its latitude. They're two different things. All right, they're they're not exactly the same. So, as the sun shines onto the Earth, so let's say we've got our sun shining, the rays are shining here from 92 million miles away. There's the insulation, the incoming solar radiation from the sun. And if you're standing here at the equator, that sun's going to hit you at a very direct 90 degree angle. But if you're standing up here closer to the North Pole, maybe you're at 60, 70 degrees north latitude, the sun's going to get to hit you at an angle. So here at the equator, the angle of insulation is 90 degrees. We're further up here, now that angle of insulation is hitting you at a lower angle. So depending on what latitude you're at, you're going to get a different angle of insulation. Depending on what latitude you're at, you're going to get more intense insulation. Depending on what latitude you're at, you're going to get changes in temperature. That's why we can go back here and look at this, where we've got these two places, the, a place near the equator, where the sun is going to be striking this place more directly. The sun's rays are going to hit this equator area with a, with a much higher angle. Where down at the South Pole, those sun's rays are going to be hitting at a much lower angle. Therefore, it's not as intense, therefore not as hot at that place. We could express this uh, using a quick graph. We can make a quick graph of what's going on here. And we could just uh, we'll draw a couple lines here. We'll say here's an x-axis and a, a y-axis. And we could say that down here is latitude. And the latitude, we could say, starts here at the South Pole at 90 degrees south. Then it goes to the equator at 0 degrees. And then over here, the North Pole, 90 degrees north. So this x-axis, the bottom, is going to represent going from the South Pole up to the North Pole. And then over here on the side, this axis, or the y-axis, this is going to represent the intensity of insulation. All right, and that's increasing this way. So here, we're going to have a low intensity. And up here, this would be a high intensity. And so if we were to graph this, we would see a relationship where the highest intensity happens at the equator. Right? If we look at this, the greatest intensity of insulation happens at the equator. The lowest intensity is going to happen at the north and the south poles. Our graph would look like this. The, the lowest intensity happens at the south pole and the north pole. Our highest intensity is going to be at the equator. And then it gets low again over there. So we can see that there's a relationship that... The greatest intensity happens at the equator, lowest intensity at the poles. And this is also why it's cold. Why is it cold at the North Pole and the South Pole? Because the angle of insulation or the intensity of insulation is going to be low. We could take out the word intensity here, and we could say we're talking about the angle of insulation. The angle of insulation is going to be lower at the South Pole and the North Pole. This is not only true for latitude. But it's also true for what time of year it is. Right? During the year, you know that sometimes it's cold and uh, sometimes it's warm. And this, the, re the reason for that is, again, the angle of the insulation. You guys know that if we take a look at two people, let's say uh, we look at those people. And instead of putting these two people at different places, I'm actually going to put them at different times of the year. They're going to be in the same place. Let's say they're sitting here in Greece, New York, uh, same exact place. But we're going to put them at different times. So the person on the left is going to be standing in Greece, New York on June, uh, it, sometime in June. And this person over here is going to be standing in Greece, New York sometime in December. Well, you know it's going to be a lot warmer in June. You're going to be having your, your, your swim trunks on, and you'll be ready to go swimming and hanging out. And you, But in wintertime, though, you're going to be all bundled up, and you got to make sure you have your, your winter cap on, and uh, you're going to make sure that you got your scarf on as well. you got to stay toasty warm. Well, the, the reason this is happening is because in June, the angle of the sun the angle of insulation is higher in June than in December. In December, that angle of insulation is much lower. So remember, a lower angle of insulation, it's less intense. If it's less intense, you're going to have less heat or lower temperature. So time of year also has 
a an effect on the angle of insulation and therefore the temperature. Again, we could graph this 